This is a tiny single board computer called the Raxa X4 and it's powered by an Intel X86 CPU. Keep watching as I test various emulators and show you why it's such an awesome little computer. This is how it arrived, now let's unbox it. As you can see it's all sealed up. There are the features. And this is the box for the uh, heatsink case. Wow, first impressions, it's extremely small. Look, it fits in the palm of my hand. It's about the size of a Raspberry Pi 5. And um, what do we have here? We have two antennas, here and here. And that looks like a battery for the uh, real-time clock, which connects here. Overall, it looks like a solid device. Let's look at what we get with the X4. Here are the specifications on screen. It's powered by an Intel N100 CPU that turbos up to 3.4 GHz and it comes in various RAM configurations up to a maximum of 16 GB. The model I have here is the 8 GB version with no onboard eMMC storage. The 8GB and up models come with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. This 8GB uh, version I have here can be bought for $93 including shipping and the case is nearly $17 and it can be bought from uh, AliExpress. Right, let's take a look at the ports. Let's start here with the USB port. This is only for um, power delivery and um, not data. Next to that we have this here which is um, for power of Ethernet and uh, next to that we have two micro HDMI ports and then over on the end here we have a 3.5mm headphone jack that supports microphones and headphones. Now turning it on the side here we have the USB ports, we have a USB 2.0 port and we have three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports that support 10 gigabits, which I haven't seen on any Raspberry Pi computer. And also what I haven't seen on any Raspberry Pi computer is this here, which is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which is great to see. Okay. Now, moving on here on the end, we have something quite unique and what sets this board apart from many other Intel based computers and that is the inclusion of a colourful 40 pin GPIO header which is great to see if you're into electronic projects and that is powered by, if I can see, here it is, the Can you see it? It's powered by an RP2040 chip. So in effect, you have a Raspberry Pi Pico computer. And also what we have here is, is this here, an M.2 slot that supports NVMe cards, but it only supports 2230 sized NVMe cards. And over here, Finally, on this side, we have a power on and off button. Let's turn it over and see what we have at the bottom. At the bottom, we have the um, real-time clock battery header and a fan header. And also, we have the Intel chip, the N100 chip takes most of the size of the board at the bottom there. Overall, a fairly well specced up uh, little computer. Here is the uh, heat sinking case, let's see what we have here. 
Uh, I must say it's uh, fairly good quality. It's heavy. And inside here, It's just the um, thermal pads and uh, some screws. Okay, let me assemble it and um, I'll do some testing. And uh, here is where you can buy the uh, RAGSX4. Currently it's uh, $62 for the uh, 4 gigabyte version. And the uh, 4 gigabyte version, of course, only comes with uh, Wi-Fi 5. However, I'd recommend the 8 gigabyte version. That comes with Wi-Fi 6, and it can be had for uh, just a little over $83. Um, but if you can afford it, I'd get the uh, 12 gigabyte version. And also, what you're going to need is the uh, heat sink fan combo for almost $17. Right, here I am uh, on the Raxa X4 and um, I've installed the operating system. You've got various um, options, what operating system you want to install, you've got Windows 10, 11 or some uh, Linux versions here. These are all from the official site so you've got to have the keys if you want uh, Windows 11 or 10. I've chosen to have uh, Windows 11 and I installed it with uh, Rufus because it allows you to install it with a few customized options. Um, it's fairly straightforward and then I installed the um, drivers and um, things like that. Uh, one tip I'd say is just install the uh, Wi-Fi drivers first and just do the update and it will install quite a lot of the other drivers for you. And then there's a couple of more uh, drivers you have to install after that. Anyway, let's have a look at some uh, YouTube playback. Here we've got the old uh, Costa Rica up in uh, a tab and uh, let's play it at, and it's at 4k as you can see as you can see very smooth playback no problems whatsoever only three drops frames but I think some of that is down to caching and the browser Okay, let's close this tab and let's close this browser. Now what I've done is also um, I've uh, got these uh, programs up and um, here we can see some information about the processor is the uh, Intel N100 here, maximum TDP of 6 watts and um, there's the uh, cache and level 2 and uh, level 3 cache there as well. And here we've got a little bit by the board, it says we are on PCI Express 3.0 and uh, the memory is DDR5 with 8 gigabytes. Right, okay, now that's out of the way. I think it's time to uh, test out some software. Let's try some emulation. First up we have some PlayStation 2 emulation with PCSX2 and Soul Calibre 3. I did not enable C states here, so there's room for higher performance than this. Um, and I'm also running at um, native resolution, as you can see there in the top right hand corner. Uh, overall, it's running solidly at 60 frames per second, but there are a few dips here and there. Also on PCSX2 we have Time Crisis 3 which ran pretty much the same. Um, there are an occasional dips here and there uh, but otherwise it does get up to speed at 60 frames per second um, at native resolution. Here I have um, C states enabled as well. Now, moving on to some PSP emulation with PPSSPP and running God of War Chains of Olympus. 
The uh, Raxa X4 had no problem emulating it and ran it comfortably at 3x resolution. The GPU usage does shoot up a little bit high though. However, the CPU usage remains cool, never shooting above more than 49 degrees Celsius. Next up, we have some Dreamcast emulation using Flycast. And here we have uh, Powerstone 2, and it's running at 3x resolution. And um, it was no trouble at all for it. Many of these uh, SPCs have no problems whatsoever emulating the Dreamcast. As you can see, the Raxa X4 is no different. Next up is some um, Sega Lindbergh emulation. And this is an Afterburner Climax. And this isn't in Windows, this is in uh, Linux using uh, Batacera. Um, but overall, it's a great experience. I believe this game was um, uh, ported over to the uh, PlayStation 3. Not all the uh, Sega Lindbergh uh, games run as uh, smoothly as this. Some of them uh, have some um, frame rate issues. Also on the Sega Lindbergh emulator is this, Virtua Fighter 5 R. Now Virtua Fighter 5 R is a bit more um, graphically intense than the uh, Afterburner Climax and it shows because there's a fair bit of slowdown in this uh, game. However, the emulator is still in uh, beta and uh, there's a lot of um, progress to be made. But overall, it is still looking pretty good. Next up, I wanted to show this, which I only just discovered. It's a fan conversion of a Wonderswan game on the PC. It's called Ghosts and Demons, and it's uh, free to download. Check it out because it's uh, really good and quite addictive. Um, the uh, Rax X4 had no problem running this. I also out recently was this, it's uh, Sonic Unleashed from the Xbox 360 and uh, somebody's uh, recompiled the code which was originally on the uh, PowerPC to the uh, PC's uh, x86 and um, it runs kind of okay but the uh, poor little mite and it's uh, GPU struggles as you can see at the top there, 94, 98, 99% uh, GPU usage. Um, well, but if you put it in a window, like here I have it, it runs a bit faster, which is, just shows that the uh, GPU is the biggest bottleneck here. On to some uh, benchmarks now. First up was uh, Fermac, and uh, that gave a score of uh, 283 points, which is uh, not really anything spectacular. But then again, it is an integrated GPU. On to Geekbench now. I ran both uh, Geekbench 5 and uh, Geekbench 6. And the score I got from um, them was, as you can see, 943 for single core and 2331 for multi-score on Geekbench 5. Now uh, this was uh, using a normal TDP um, wattage. Um, I increased the wattage to uh, 20 watts for the overall system and the scores were slightly better as you'll see in the uh, graphs. The Raxa X4 has the best overall performance of all the SPCs I've uh, tested. So 
So if you want a slightly better performance, increase the wattage in the bias as long as you've uh, got adequate cooling. It's great to see uh, SBCs with uh, something other than uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. And here I tested the uh, 2.5 uh, gigabit Ethernet port using iPerf. And uh, as you can see, 284 megabytes a second on average which uh, is uh, pretty good. Oh, and um, here is the uh, crystal disk mark uh, score which I ran. And um, as you can see, the uh, read speeds are solid at 3.5 gigabytes a second read speeds on the sequentials. And the uh, sequential write speeds are 2.5 gigabytes a second as well. Overall, a pretty solid score and um, it's even uh, faster than my main desktop uh, PC's SSD. Well, it's time to bring this video to an end. What a fantastic little computer the Rux X4 was. I was surprised at how small it was when I unboxed it. Here it is, next to the uh, Raspberry Pi 5 computer. It's quite remarkable at um, how well it ran uh, Windows 11. It had some of the uh, best emulation performance from an affordable under $100 SBC I've seen. It also offered some really good I.O. thanks to the inclusion of its uh, PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot and the speedy 2.5 gigabit network port. The Raxa X4 also had something I've not seen before in an Intel computer, and that's the inclusion of GPIO headers, which are normally found on uh, Raspberry Pi computers. Overall, if you were to buy this, you could quite happily use it as a low-powered day-to-day general purpose computer, more so than any other low-budget SPC you can find at uh, this price point. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and a subscription will be much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video.